going to mean today? We have a, another fun card. Um, thought I would make a foray into the fractured cards, or um, as we called them, um, aperture cards, 100 years ago when we were doing um, uh, scrapbooking. So I um, saw a video, which I will link for you. Um, the amazing uh, Miss Terry did one with, um, I don't, I guess it's an eight-sided shape. So that was quite a bit different, but it inspired me to go and find my own shape and give this a try. And of course I chose the hexagons because as you know, one of my favorite, 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 favorite um, shapes is the hexagon and I love the hexagon punch. So this is what I made. Do, do, do. And let's turn the camera down and get going because I'm actually gonna change this up just a little bit and make one slightly different. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. Thanks a lot. We'll see you down there. Okay, it looks like we got the camera set up now. Awesome. All right. Now, first we have all of our bits and pieces. We have a scrap of white cardstock. We cut a liner. This is your basic um, card. <laughs> oh, excuse me. This one is, yeah, here we go. This is your basic card base. If you are working with metric, we have, um, excuse me, 14.85 by, or 21 centimeters by 14.85. If we are working in metric, this is going to be eight and a half by five and a half, okay? It is scored down the center. I don't know if you can see that, but I will tell you that I have already scored it. So we can fold it. There we go. I'm going to set this aside for now. I have cut two pieces exactly the same size. This is this piece is for the interior of the card. What I what I call a card liner. If you've been hanging out with me for a while, and this is again I do this almost every single time. It is going to be uh, 14.4 centimeters by 10 centimeters across the top. And if we are working metric, it's going to be five and a quarter by four. Now this is exactly the same size piece. It's a piece of designer series paper. This comes from the beautiful poetic expressions. We're going to be using this on the front. So these two people, a little bit though, these two pieces are the same size. And the next thing I have done, and I left this here, this is the bottom half of this, is I cut some strips. You're going to need six strips. If you're using these, the size strip is fine. So just cut off of, you know, there is your card base at the top, going this way. And then I just cut three strips going along there. The strips are going to be a quarter inch wide. Um, if you work in metric, that's seven centimeters. Then you just cut each of those long strips in half, each of those three, and, and now we have six. All right, I'm going to set these aside for now. <coughs> We're going to go and stamp next. I'm going to stamp our greeting. Now, I showed you on the sample here, I have here, I think it in the middle there we go uh, we are going to do this one upright I'm going to use a slightly different greeting here and I'm still using the heartfelt hexagon set which I absolutely adore this set I've used it. well in fact you can see how much I've used it because my stamps are all pink pink and sort of gray where I've used black by the way this oh that didn't pick up square this particular stamp right here makes the most nifty looking emboss because it's a double line with the dots in the middle. And so when you emboss this, it's really pretty. All right, and then I'm going to use the sentiment from Heartfelt. And this one says, I hope your day is filled with joy. So let's see, should I do these? Nope, this one is, they're designed to fit, but this is not gonna do it I have to stamp afterwards. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes they line up perfectly. I did not test this one. Actually, no. 
Anytime there's any overlap, you don't want that because you won't get a square, uh, a square stamp, uh, an even stamp. So let's do the sky first. This is my greeting first. Um, I have not used this one yet, so I'm going to rub it a little bit. If you see my videos, you know that these stamps come with a, a mold release still on them, which makes them not sticky. And so when they're not sticky, the ink doesn't stick to them. Okay, I am using Lost Lagoon, which is slowly becoming one of my absolute favorite colors. In that you can use it on winter colored cards and it makes you think of a cold winter morning. But I particularly like it because it makes me think of Oh, perfect. Uh, makes me think of a lagoon. It's the name, Lost Lagoon. And this time of year when it's cold and gloomy outside, and believe me, we have some gloom out there. I don't know, I just want something a bit brighter and lighter. So, let's set this down. You'll probably see me just throwing this down. I want the stamp to relax. Because the photopolymer stamps are... are uh, more flexy than the cling stamps, you would need to let the outline ones relax because you can change their shape, which is wonderful, um, especially if you're doing photopolymer. If I wanted to do like a, um, a, a long cinnamon, you can actually curve it. Cinnamon, sentiment, you can actually curve it onto the stamp. So I've done that one before as well. So pick it up, make sure it's really nice and square. I'll set it down on here. Uh, make sure we have a perfect ink up. Yes, it looks perfect. I don't know why I stamped that upside down. I don't think it matters really, but let's see if we can stamp it right side up this time. Now I'm going to move this forward and hopefully my head will not be in your way. Okay. Yeah, I know I know why I did it upside down. So it wouldn't hit my fat belly. Okay. All right, good time concentrating again. I can't talk and concentrate at the same time. If anybody else has that problem, give me a thumbs up in the comment section. <laughs> All right, now that is our sentiment stamped, and I'm going to, while I have the ink out and the stamps, also from this same set is this lovely, lovely little flower. And I'm going to stamp that for the inside of the card. And when I do my envelope later on, this actually is slated to go to a specific person. Um, I'll stamp this on the outside of the envelope as well. Oof. Really kiss the edges of that. Not good. Okay, once again, silence while I concentrate. <laughs> There we go. Isn't that pretty? Such a simple little design. All right, stamping done. Although, honestly, that is my favorite part. Let's get this out of the way. Put the box back. Excellent. Now, I'll set this aside to be glued to the interior later. Um, and this one will probably also have a happy birthday in it as well. But you, you do yours. Now, we're going to need these parts. And the wonderful hexagon punch. Now, I'm going to line this up in here. Once again, I'm going to try to do this so you can see it. Ah. Here we go. Oop. Love punches. Okay, and that is it for Wonder Punch. That is it for our scrap paper. And now we need glue and strips. Now, you notice I have not affixed this to the card base. We need it loose for now. And this is our card. We're going to go upright with this one. And so what we're going to do is give this a little bit of glue. Actually, I don't really like gluing white things. We're gonna tape this. Okay. 
There we go. I don't, I've said this before. I don't know if anybody's really caught on. Sometimes if you're gluing things that are white, the glue will leave a glue shadow on it. You really don't want a glue shadow. Now I am lining my card up on my grid paper here. So what if I got one, two, three, four. Looks good. And we're going to center it that way. And so now I have sort of a visual reference so I can get this right in the center. Normally I don't fuss too much about the center, but I think this particular um, technique looks nice with it either centered or blatantly off to one side. So when you, you know you've probably seen these done with the squares and they'll do like one in the corner, which looks really nice. Um, but since this one has so many small pieces to it, we're going to start in this direction. Or we're going to start in the center. All right, now, moving it this way, we're going to go around with the strips. Now, this is slightly different. Uh, if you were making a square one, you would put glue on your entire strip. But we're not going to do that. We are only need to glue a small part of the strip in place at a time. And then we will go back and glue the... I need my little... My little glue spooger here. Here. That's not the technical name of this. The technical name is of this is a okay. I'm going slightly see I did it again. I had that is such a bad habit that I have as I finish sentences in my head and I don't actually say what I'm thinking. So knowing that you guys are not in my head, this is a silicone sheet. That was the word I said and then didn't say it. Now we're going to start with our strip. I have glue just on this corner. I'm going to extend it. And this only is for your first strip you lay down. Slightly below the edge. All right, and I'm going to line that up on the edge. And yes, I know there's a bit of a curve there. But in the end, it's not really going to matter. Okay, this is our first strip down. And now we're going to turn. We're going to put some glue on the next edge. And this one I'm going to put slightly more glue. So it's a longer edge. And I have thrown my glue cap across the, across the room. Now, this is why you don't glue it down. Instead of butting up to it as you would on a square one, we're actually going to tuck this underneath. And that is what is going to give us this nice, clean lines. So, there we go. Now, you have two options here. If you want to go ahead and glue this down now, we're done with this strip. One of two ways. Um, I find it easier if I glue them down as I'm done with them. Um, because going back and dealing with all the little flippies kind of made me a little nuts. And I've made two or three of these cards now. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and lay this glue down. And it's also sort of gives it a chance to dry a bit. So there we go. And I am slipping my piece underneath there. Okay, so that's our first strip done. Strip number two, part way down. Let's turn so we can see what we're doing. We're going to pick up our next strip. We're going to give it a partial glue just on the edge. Oops. Okay, hope you can see that. And then we're going to tuck underneath. And we do have to do these in order so it looks right. Now it's butted up to the edge, tucked underneath. Perfect. Let's go back, re-glue the sheet. Boy, I am really struggling with this glue today. It is not being kind to me. And you notice that I'm not gluing all the way to the end because I know it's going to extend out. There we go. Strip number two in place. Turn. We're going to do the next strip. Same thing. You're going to hear me repeat this three more times because there's six strips. Tuck under the edge. Now push that down, make sure we're in place and see how we're rolling here going in the semicircle. three down. Number 
four. Screw the edge. Tuck. Now this wants to come, wants to come up on it a little bit, so make sure I get that all the way tucked under and all the edge is square because it wants to buck out a bit. There we go. You can see there's not, even though there's tiny bits there, I've used a background that sort of matches with this. So um, when you're working with this, try to match the background of your sentiment with the background of your pattern paper and you'll have less of a chance of of little tiny bits showing but I think I hope you can tell this is actually bugged down really quite tight here all right let's do this get this guy's glued down okay next strip last strip Ta -da. My next strip down. Okay. No, that's good. I'll glue this guy down. Ugh, blue spooge. Hate it. These are such narrow strips, it's almost, you can do it without spooging the glue, but even if you're using one of those tiny, tiny ones, I'll go back and I'll take that later. I have a glue eraser, which has been, this thing was so cheap off of Amazon, if you guys haven't seen these before. Um, it's just a piece of uh, hard rubber that's texturized. But what it does is it will take up any bit of glue. Now I'm not gonna do it, I have to wait till it dries. But where the glue has left to shine, it will just take it right up. It rolls it up into a little ball. Okay, last glue strip down. Well, did so good on the glue blue and we got to the last one, last two. All right, that is our glue done. We're gonna give this a minute. Now, I use what I call my glue scissors. This is an old pair of scissors that I frequently get glue on them. But they're easily cleaned. Now, all I'm doing is cutting off those edges. Glue! I think that's a bit of glue as well. Nope, oh, blue. And there we go. Not to complete the ensemble, let's glue this down to our card base leaving an equal amount all the way around five to seven centimeters or a quarter of an inch. However, you lovelies may be working. There's this. There we go. All right, still the damp there, so I'll go back and clean that up with my glue eraser later. You can still see the little sploosh, but I, I hope I'm going to try to bring it up to the camera so you can see that. But see, the tiny bit that's from the circular edges, it doesn't really show. You have to be looking for it. And there we go, a fractured card that is not a square. You can take any shape to do this. I have to say, I got this idea. I'd love to tell you it's original, but the idea came from Terry Walker, who's just amazing. And she used the 
countryside shape dies. The one that's, well, I guess they're eight sided. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, eight sided. And used it in the center and did these all the way around with the eight sides. Now, I do, I will put a link in the description to her, um, her video where she's done it. Because if you would like to use those dies, she does tell you a trick on working on the short ends because you do have to treat them slightly differently. But she is the one that, that said, don't worry about trying to cut these corners to fit. Just tuck them under slightly. And as you can see, it looks gorgeous. Now, I finished this off with a little Lost Lagoon bow. That's, uh, I think this is the quarter inch uh, banded ribbon. And I tied a little tiny bow and I'm going to, Stick it with some tape that's stuck to me now. Oh, glue dots. I, my love-hate relationship with the glue dot. Come on. See? That's the hate part. Pull my bit up and down. We're going to pop this in the middle. And of course, you can decorate this with all kinds of things. Um, add some sequins to it, some shinies. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And of course, I've stamped inside. See when you open that up. And then I'll do the card and fix that later. This is the other one. So here's the two side by side. I've used that same uh, Poetic Designer Series paper. I keep calling it poetic justice. If I do that, just laugh and, and carry on. And I'm wondering if I have some pretty bling to pop in there. Um, I know I've got some Lost Lagoon bling. Oh, well, it's not, I'm not going to find it easily. Hmm. Oh, wait, maybe I will. Oh, look, here we go. Look at this. These are, oh no, that's Pretty Peacock. That's not Lost Lagoon. It's kind of the same. No, I don't like the gold. What do you think? Nah. Nah, it looks good like it is. We're going to leave it gorgeous and plain. Uh, no, I have Lost Lagoon. Doesn't that drive you crazy when you know you've got something and you can't lay your hands on it? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the Fractured Card. Uh, done with a different shape in the center. So go check out Terry's video and hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more, uh, for more ideas. Have a lovely, lovely day.